Welcome brothers and sisters in Christ and non-believers alike. I would like to welcome you once again to our Bible studies. Today, we're going to be talking about a subject that is very important for us as Christians. Also is affecting the nucleus of the family, which is the foundation of the society, especially in those societies in where the foundation is Christ, as is in the United States specifically. That would be a reprobate mind in where transhumanism, transgenderism, homosexuality are unseemly behavior of that reprobate mind. We're going to be reading the book of Romans chapter 1 verses 17 through 32. I am Carlos, minister of the Lord Jesus Christ and steward of his fields. In order for us to talk about this subject, we must talk about the definition of truth. What is truth? The truth, many people have their point of view of what truth is. Many people believe that they have the basic foundation of what truth is, but it is not so. In accordance with the Western Dictionary, the body of a real things, events, and facts, which means actuality, that's a truth. Also defines it as the state of being the case, a fact that is also true. This truth is normally capitalized in transcendent fundamental or spiritual reality. Nobody can change it. And that is, of course, from the point of view of those that are not in the way of Christ. I am a follower of the way, which is Jesus Christ. So I go by not what the Webster Dictionary says, but what the Word of God tells me it is. And what the Bible says that is truth. It's very important for us to make definition of this point of truth. The language has been corrupted and by corrupting the language of communication, the way that we communicate with each other, the devil and evil forces are deceiving people. So what the Bible says about the truth in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6 says that Jesus said unto him, which was one of the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If it is not according to the word of God and the teachings of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then there is no truth. It is interesting for all of us to understand the following, that when Jesus Christ was in front of Pilate and he was judged by all the people that were surrounding him, Pilate therefore said to Jesus Christ, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered to him and everyone else's, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Christ is the witness of truth. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is truth. The word of God is truthful. And those that are with the seal of the Holy Spirit, saved through the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died in the cross, that he gave himself in the cross for all of us, shed the blood and cleanse us of all our sins, die in the cross for you and I, and ascended to the Father on the third day. At that very moment, you and I were those ones that are in the Lord Jesus Christ, saved through the blood of the Lamb, our names, being added to the book of the Lamb, which is the book of life. And we have access to the mansions of heaven, the kingdom of the Lord God, Jesus Christ, in heaven. That's the truth, based on the word of God. And that's what I go by. We must also bring to clarification other subjects that people have been deceived by. And that has not been part of our vocabulary until recently in our generations. Those are transhumanism. Transhumanism is a philosophical and scientific movement that advocates the use of current and emerging technologies, such as genetic engineering, cryonics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology to augment human capabilities and improved the human condition, so they said. Transhumanists envision a future in which the responsible application of such technologies enables humans to slow, 
reverse, or eliminate the aging process to achieve corresponding increase in human life spans and to enhance human cognitive and sensory capacities. The movement proposes that humans with augmented capabilities will evolve into an enhanced species that transcends humanity, that would be the post-human. This definition, by the way, is based on Britannica's.com website. We also need to bring attention to these two following definitions, transgenderism. The terms transgender and gender diverse covers a range of gender identities and gender expressions. These terms move past to the idea that all people can be classified as only one of two genders, female or male. That idea is called the gender binary. Gender identity is the internal intents of being a male, female, neither, or some combination of both. Gender expressions typically involves how gender identity is shown to the outside world through the way a person looks or act. Gender expressions may include clothing, mannerism, communication, style, and interests, among other things. People who are transgender or gender diverse include those who have a gender identity that differs from the sex assigned to them at birth, those whose gender expression doesn't follow society's norms for the sex assigned to them at birth those who identify and express their gender outside of the gender binary. Gender identity and sexual orientation. Most people have a sense of physical, emotional, and romantic attraction to others. Sexual orientation describes the group of people to whom this attraction is directed. For example, a person may be attracted to men, women, both, or neither. Being transgender or gender diverse is linked to a specific sexual orientation and sexual orientation cannot be assumed based on gender identity or gender expression. That, by the way, brothers and sisters, in Christ and non-believers alike, it comes from Mayo Clinic website. Homosexuality, the definition of sexual interest in an, an attraction to members of one's own sex. The term gay is frequently used as a synonym or homosexual. Female homosexuality is often referred to as lesbianism. This definition comes from Britannica.com website. We're in the book of Romans, chapter 1. We're going to be reading from verses 17 to 32. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 17. For their end is the righteousness of God. Reveal from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showeth unto them. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, make like to corruptible men, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Verse 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies 
between themselves. Verse 25, who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burn in their lust one toward another with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Verse 30. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Verse 31. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Verse 32. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. God bless his word. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless these Bible studies and to allow, O oh my Lord, our mind, our soul, and our heart to be, O oh my Lord, connected with you in this moment, that you can fill our lives with the message of salvation and with the message of the word. Bring this message throughout these waves, my Lord, to all those lives that they need it, and only you will be glorified. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, my Lord and Savior, to whom forever will be praised. O Rashi Nahi, Adonai, Heavenly Father, Amen. Thank you, my Lord. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ and non-believers alike, we already went through the subject of truth. We determined that truth is in Christ and Christ is the truth. He is a witness for the truth. The Word of God is the truth. And this is for all followers of the way, Christians that are placing their sight in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of our Lord for his assembly. And of course, the day of judgment. We also determine, based on the human points of view, the definitions of transhumanism, transgenderism, and homosexuality. We determine and we saw the definition based on the human characters. But what about based on the Bible? What the Bible says about it? That should concern us. We are the followers of the way. We're the followers of Jesus Christ. And we must know the difference in between one and the other in terms of from the perspective of the human that is not in Christ and the ones that are saved in Christ Jesus. The Bible stated that at the end times, deception will be rampant and will be so bad that would be even difficult for those elects to know the truth unless you are based on the word of God with the foundation that your life will be in Christ, that you are very well versed in the word, you will not know the difference. That is so important for you to read the word of God, for you to understand that is imperative for you to use the word of God in your life in a daily basis. We're going now to see the consequences of idolatry. And the consequences of idolatry are transhumanism, transgenderism, and homosexuality. We already saw that transhumanism, philosophical way, that is looking to make the humankind live forever. Transgenderism are the way in where the humankind is so confused that is trying to find an excuse for them to act their sinful way. 
homosexuality. Once again, those that are non safe through Christ are looking for an excuse to justify their behavior. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 and 4, and it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Simple, plain language. Don't do anything. Don't substitute God with nothing carved by humans or for the matter of anything at all. What makes so much difference Israel from any other civilization around them was that they were the people of the God with no image and the God of no temple. Satan was the root of sin of pride. In Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 expressed, O shining star, son of the morning, how you have fallen from the heaven, you weakening the nations, you are cut down to the ground. For you have said in your heart, I will go up to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit in the mount of meeting in the sides of the north. I will raise over the highest of the clouds. I will be compared to the most high. Now, let's make good clear definition of what you're reading. First of all, we need to notice that the devil understand that there is nothing bigger higher than god he was and he wanted to be just like god not above god not below god there is nothing higher than god none his heart was full of pride and it is says that he was possibly the archangel that was in charge of all the angels in heaven especially those of were praising god okay because he talks about having the music and uh, instruments and so forth. Satan, or Lucifer, was brought down to earth. He rebels against God, and you can read that also in Revelation chapter 12. With him, one third of the angels of heaven rebels against heaven. God bring him out of heaven because there is found no place for him and his followers in heaven and is thrown to earth. So, Satan is the root of sin, of pride, pridefulness. Another example, man's fall in the Garden of Eden. God created in the Garden of Eden, Adam. And when he created Adam, Adam was commanded to give a name to every creature on earth that was created by God, that was located in the Garden of Eden. It was found not equal for Adam, so God put asleep Adam and out of the rib of Adam, not out of the dust, out of the body, out of the rib of Adam. He created the woman. The man is created directly from God and out of the man, the woman is created to be equal helpers. But then they fall from the grace of God because they were deceived by the satanic forces. Deception is what brings down people when you don't know and you are not familiar with the word of god you have the propensity to be deceived by the evil forces if you are knowledgeable in the word of god you do not need to have a, a bachelor's degree a master or a phd for that matter anything you just need to have the seal of the holy spirit in you for you to understand the word of god i want to all of you understand the following the devil he knows from left to right from right to left from top to bottom the word of god he knows him he can say it one word at a time and one verse at a time and the entire the entire bible all at once but the devil has not does not and will never have the holy spirit and the holy spirit is what gives to the people of god the assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ, the authority and the power to understand the word of God. So you don't need to be or to have a college degree for you to read the word of God and understanding it. That inspiration comes only through the Holy Spirit. The devil does not have that power. Another example 
of sinning against God. I mean, there are many examples, but I'm just giving you the most well-known by, by all the people. Is when the fallen angels, Nephilim, and the women of men, noticed, not the women of God, the women of men, had a relationship, and as a result for that relation, came to be what is called the hybrids, or the born on earth. That translation of the born on earth from English to the Greek is gigantes. It happens that they were giants, but the meaning of the term in Greek of gigantes was the ones born on earth. Those hybrid were before the flood and after, the Bible says. That was also a result of idolatry. Women and the evil forces love more themselves than they love God. Then in Genesis chapter 11 comes the Tower of Babel. It was called the Tower of Babel because the people were confused. Their language was confused for them not to do what they wanted to do, which was coming at one against God and to create a portal that they could go to heaven. It is my belief, I will say, and please you can Judge me as much as you want. You can send me emails. Doesn't matter. You will have my emails in these Bible studies that you can send me emails and requests if you like or questions. It is my belief that Nimrod was a born on earth, a born from the fallen angels, a, a gigantus, a giant. That's my belief. And if you look and read those verses in chapter 11 of Genesis, using the Septuagint, you will notice exactly what I am telling you. Remember, the Septuagint was a translation done three to four hundred years before the birth of Christ. One of the biggest examples in terms of idolatry and the consequences of idolatry was Sodom and Gomorrah. That is in Genesis chapter 19, and you can read all about it. Please, when you read the Word of God, read it slowly before you commit to the reading of the Word of God. Make a prayer asking for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in you. In the letter of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6 says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Listen carefully. Sodom and Gomorrah was for you to see what will happen if you live an ungodly life. We will see why it's so specific in terms of living an ungodly life soon. In Jude chapter 1, the only chapter in the book of Jude, verse 7, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, so it was not only Sodom and Gomorrah, we, we just know them because they are the most prominent among the cities that were affected by this tragic event. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Fornication was a voluntary act and decision that they took to proceed with. See, they were giving themselves and going after strange. The word strange here in the Greek is other or opposed is the word G for Greek, 2087 in the strong words, which means heteros. That's where our uh, terms heterosexual comes from and other heteros. He says, and going after strange flesh. The term flesh from the Greek is strong number G4561, sarcos. And remember, if you link this to what is called sarcophagus, Flesh is referring here to what is outside of the humankind. There are three elements in the humankind, which is flesh, the spirit, and your soul. Flesh is dust to dust. The spirit goes back to God who gave it to you because the spirit is what makes you alive. It makes you move. It makes you just like a chicken, a horse, a dog, a pig, whatever. They have spirit of life. But your soul is what makes you, you and only you. And that will be presented in front of God in the end times at the judgment day. If you're in Christ, 
you will be written in the book of life and you will have access to the mansions of heaven. If you are not in Christ, you will be judged on the books of works and you will be found guilty and sent to the lake of fire for eternity. And it continues, it says, And going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Another example of what we express before is Israel leave the land of Egypt. The Israel people were subdued as slaves in Egypt. And as he take them out with their leader, which is Moses, Moses goes to the mountain to write what God is telling him to do, and which are the Ten Commandments. That is in Exodus chapter 32, verse 4, in where the people now fell into idolatry by creating a golden calf. In Numbers chapter 22, it talks also about Balaam the seer, who was called by Balak, and he wants to curse to the people of Israel to be cursed. Send for the seer, Balaam, and Balaam comes, and instead cursing Israel, he blessed Israel. Not after, of course, he taught and instructed Balak to put idols in the south and the north of the Israelite camp with prostitutes. That way, the people of Israel was going to be punished by, by God and destroyed by God himself. And, of course, our last example would be when the tribe of Dan brought idolatry to the people of Israel. And that is in the book of Judges, chapter 18. Please read it carefully. During this period of time, the first tribe in Israel to fall into idolatry was the tribe of Dan. Verse 17 says, The righteousness of God revealed from faith. So now we're talking about a subject, which is the righteousness of God. And that righteousness of God comes by you being cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, you're not righteous on your own. You've been saved by the mercy of the Lord, and you have made righteous in the eyes of the Lord through the blood of Christ. And it says, from believer to believer. Why believer to believer? Because in you is the Holy Spirit. You have faith, and that faith was power for you to receive the Holy Spirit. And as a result, your heart and your soul was brought to follow the way who is Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Because the just shall live by faith. Now, many of you will say, what is faith? Well, we're going to see what is faith all about. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What it means by that? Well, first, Faith is the essence, most pure element of those things we are looking forward to happen. What we're looking forward to happen? We're looking forward to happen the rapture, the harpaso, which is the believers in Christ Jesus will be taken, and with them also the Holy Spirit. Please read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Please read it consciously and slowly that you can understand it. Then, the establishment of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus on the millennial in the promised land in Israel here on earth. You can also read this in many other places in the word of God, but mainly in Ezekiel chapter 40 and in the book of Revelation chapter 20. And another subject that we are hoping for will be the judgment day. If you are in Christ, that judgment day, you don't need to worry about it because you are cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be seen through the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result, you have direct access to the kingdom of heaven, not on your own merits, but through the grace of the Lord. But if you are not saved through the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be judged based on your works with the books of works and you will be found guilty and thrown to the lake of fire. Faith is acquired by hearing the word of God and is essential for the believer in Christ Jesus, for him or her to be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Please, when you do this, I would like for you to go back to the book of Acts of the Apostles in chapter 1 and read that chapter beginning verses. And you will see that the 
Lord Jesus Christ is told the disciples that they will receive power and after that they will be sealed with the Holy Spirit for them to become witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel around the world. First you receive power. That power is received by hearing, but hearing the word of God, no other way. So you receive faith by hearing, but hearing the word of God. You receive the faith, the power of faith, and then you are sealed and you receive the Holy Spirit in you and you become a witness of the only living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and his gospel. You will become an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ and steward of his fields. So Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that, after you receiving that power, The Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye, that means you, shall be a witness. That's the process. You hear the word of God, you receive the power of faith in you, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and you become a witness of the Lord. Now, there are two parts of faith. The faith is the substance of things that we hope for. We already saw those. Now, is the evidence of things not seen. And evidence is needed only when something must be proved to be truthful. That's why I brought you to the beginning of my presentation when I was showing you the real meaning of true. When you need to prove something, you bring that evidence with faith, knowing that you have in you the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will bring through your mouth the word of God. That evidence is normally brought into a trial every single day that we the followers of the way christians in christ are in this world we are under a trial and we must be prepared with the word of god for us to show and prove the evidence truthful evidence as the word of god has them for us to defend the gospel of the lord jesus christ we are stewards of the lord okay in verse 18 through 19 He says that the wrath of God, remember, we're in Romans chapter 1. Now we're talking about verse 18 and 19. The wrath of God. So we spoke now about the righteousness of God in verse 17 and how that righteousness became part of the human that are saved through the Lord Jesus Christ. But now we're talking about the wrath of God. The wrath of God doesn't have to be concerned for the Christian and followers of the way only to those that they are not accepting the message of salvation. And it comes from heaven. Why it comes from heaven? Because God is the only just and he's the judge for his own creation. Those ones that are not accepting the message of salvation through Christ. Remember, there are three subjects in the Bible. Those are, first, Israel, the people of God. Two, the assembly, the body of Christ. The body of Christ and Israel are not the same one does not replace the other each one of them is a particular entity in the prophecy of the end times the people of god israel does not replace the assembly nor the assembly replaced the people of god nor the assembly replaced israel no that is called the replacement theory and that is heresy do not accept that theory the people of god are separate from the body of Christ. And both of them are different entities. And then it comes the Gentile. And this is who they are referring to. This message now, the wrath of God, which comes from heaven, is going to be for the Gentiles, the earth dwellers, as in the book of Revelation, specifically the notes, and tell them that they are the earth dwellers. And earth dwellers are the ones that are so rooted to this world that they don't want to leave this place but stick to this place against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men this wrath of god that comes from heaven is going to be against ungodliness and unrighteousness of men they are afraid of knowing the truth you see the ungodly and the unrighteous they are afraid of knowing the truth. They could have the truth and they know the truth is not what they have. 
but they are afraid of knowing the truth. That's what the law was existing. The law was for those that were not under the truth, for them to be judged. It's not for the just, it is for the unjust. Now, truth that God himself has shown to the ungodly and unrighteous men, that's men and women, okay? I show them both, the ungodly and the unrighteous men and, and women. Verse 20 says, The invisible things of him, of whom? Of God. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they, men and women that are ungodly and unrighteous, are without excuse. I want you to understand this. The invisible things of him, of God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. What is that? If you read Psalm 19, verse 1 through 4, the psalm tells you specifically that the glory of God declares by the creation of God. Psalm 19, verse 1 through 4 tells you that the creation itself declares the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork that one day tells to another and one night tells to the other that there is no language that will not understand it so there is no excuse for those that they are talking about that what about those that never heard of the gospel here's your answer here's the answer there is no excuse nature was created by god to declare the glory of god the unrighteous and ungodly men did not glorify god And even they knew God, they did not glorify him. Look on that in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Nor they, the unrighteous and ungodly men, were thankful to God, becoming vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts was darkened. I would like for you to understand the meaning of a foolish heart. The word foolish in the Greek language, the root of that word in english in the greek language foolish is moron moronic so let's replace this becoming vain in their imaginations and their moronic hearts <laughs> was darkened vanity or pride which was the first sin shown in the bible when he talks about how lucifer who was the overseer of the angels in heaven wanted to take an equal place with God Almighty. Read it. It's in Isaiah 14. Their hearts were darkened. What it means is light does not mix with darkness. You can read that in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. It says that they become fools. What is a fool person? Even though they profess to be wise on their own opinion. The word fool in the strong language or the Greek uh, language is the word number G3471. Which it becomes moreno and is from the word 3474 to become insipid. Figuratively, passively act as a simpleton. Becoming fool, foolish, loose heavier, moreno. Which is the root of what we know as a moronic. This is where our word moronic is coming from. Verse 23 in Romans chapter 1. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. The ungodly and unrighteous men choose on their free will to bend their knees to idols. Wherefore, this is verse 24 and 25 in Romans chapter 1. And it says, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever amen so god gave them up to to the uncleanliness through their lust of their own hearts which means the word akatharos is 
the root of impurity or physical morally uncleanliness. That's the Greek word G167, which is a negative particle from the derivative of the word G2508, which means cleans. But in this case, it's the opposite, it's impure, whether it's morally lewd or especially demonic, foul, unclean. Lost comes from the strong word or Greek word G1937 and is to set the heart upon. That means that they set their heart upon searching for the lewd, morally, or especially demonic, foul, unclean if acts that they could do and they were doing. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves, which means who changed the truth of God into a lie? Those ones that change the truth of God into a lie are exposed to dishonor their sarcos between themselves. Homosexuality, transgenderism, transhumanism, those who worship idols, those who serve the idols instead the creator are exposed to these kind of conditions of homosexuality and immoralities as lesbianism, homosexuality, transgenderism, and transhumanism. Verse 26, chapter 1 in Romans, the book of Romans. For this cause, as I explained before, they substitute God for idols, they do not accept the truth, and so forth. For that cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women they change the natural use into that which is against nature. Now, what he means by this? For this cause, in verse 26, which causes are this? Let's see. For holding the truth in unrighteousness. You will see this in verse 18 and verse 25. Even when they knew God, they did not glorify God. You will see this in verse 21. Nor they, the ungodly and unrighteous, were thankful. You see this in verse 21 in the book of Romans chapter 1. Becoming vain in their own imagination. That is in verse 21. Darkening their foolish or moronic heart. Professing themselves to be wise. They, the ungodly and unrighteous. In their own mind they are geniuses. But they became morons. And that is in verse 22. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God, the God with no image, the God with no temple. They changed that glory for an idol's image created by themselves. God, because of this, God gave them up into vile affections, homosexuality, lesbianism, transsexualism, and anything to do with the LGBTQ+. For even their women change the natural use into that which is against nature. God created the man and woman to be equal helpers. Likewise, also the men. So not only the women change the natural use into which it was against nature, but likewise, also the men. And you will see this in verse 27. Leaving the natural use of the woman, okay, burn in their lust, that is, demonic desires. That's what they mean the meaning of lust is demonic desires, one toward another, men with men, which means homosexuality affections, working or performing that which is unseemly indecent acts, receiving in themselves the recompense of their error or deception. The meaning of the word error is deception. So, receiving in themselves that recompense of their own deception, which was met or necessary for them to receive. So, in verse 25, we see that change the truth of God into a lie, worship idols and serve idols. Those people are the ones that are going to be given up to uncleanliness through the lost, which is voluntary demonic desire of their own hearts, demonic desires of their own heart, verse 24. For them, the ungodly and unrighteous men, to dishonor, to defame, to destroy their own bodies or sarcos. Remember, this flesh, this body, while you are here on earth, 
it becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple of God. Holy Spirit is the third person of God. If you are defaming and destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit, you are destroying the most sacros of all. You are going against God himself. Their own bodies or sarcos between themselves, the ungodly and unrighteous men. And that is in verse 24. Likewise, also the men, verse 27. We already went through this, okay? Not only the woman, but the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman, burnt in their own lust or demonic desires one toward another, men with men, homosexuality and affections, working or performing that which is unseemly in decent acts receiving in themselves that recompense of their own deception or error which was met or was necessary. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. They, the ungodly and unrighteous men, did not want to acknowledge God. Verse 28 says that those that did not acknowledge God, God gave them to a reprobate mind. Verse 28. Okay, now, what is a reprobate mind, you will say? A reprobate mind is a damaged, worthless, rejected, unapproved mind. It means adokimos. G96, adokimos. Is unapproved, rejected, by implication is worthless in a literal way or morally way. Is cast away, rejected or reprobate. To those things which are not convenient. So give them to those things that are not convenient. Those things are being filled with all in verse 29 through 31 says that those people, the ungodly and the unrighteous, are filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. And in maliciousness, I want to verify and understand that you know that maliciousness is from the strong word G2549, which means evil, trouble, malice, naughtiness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. That's why I make the difference because now malignity is from the word Greek word number G2550, which is a bad character. Whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. It's not that they not only don't understand, is they are without the understanding. Covenant breakers, without natural affection. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is from the root Greek word 794, which is a hard hearted towards kindred those ones that they don't get along with their family members be careful implacable greek word 786 the root greek word 786 which is without levation truthless truth breakers not truth worthy in an agreement that means whether it is a business agreement or none or any kind of agreement unmerciful those my dear brothers and sisters are the ones that have been filled with all of those. Verse 32, chapter 1 in the book of Romans. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they, those are the ungodly and unrighteous, which commit such things are worthy of death. Remember, Sodom and Gomorrah were for those that were going to do idolatry, an example for you to look at that that exactly is going to happen to you. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So not only you, you are known to do such acts, but you enjoy and approve of those that they are doing it. The unrighteous and ungodly men are not ignorant of the judgments of God, okay? Which is death and death by fire in the lake of fire. Not just committing those acts, but they... The ungodly and unrighteous men have pleasure in them participants of such acts that do them. Everybody talks about the end times prophecies and they go normally 
with uh, Gog and Magog, uh, which is in Ezekiel 37, 38, 39. They go to um, the book of Revelation, uh, and they do many other things. Not many talks about this one. This is a prophecy for the end times. And it's Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And it says, And in that day, the end, the day of the end time, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We, the seven women, will eat our own bread and wear our own clothing. In other words, they will provide to themselves whatever they need to provide. They will be capable enough to handle their needs. Only they're talking to the man. Let your name be called on us. Collect our shame. In other words, give us the pleasure to be mothers, to bring alive our life to the world, to bring a child to the world. Commune with us. Seven women with one man. They will support him and they will live with the with that individual to support and to give them to take the shame out of them which means that any godly command in regard to safeguarding the sanctity of the family as it was instituted by god himself is gone the institution of the family which is the foundation of any society it has been fully destroyed at this point now brothers and sisters in Christ and non-believers alike, it's time for us to repent.